en question. Please be seated. Le Président, veuillez vous asseoir. En... The court is now back in session. Reprise de l'audience. And the chamber will hand the floor again to the international co-prosecutor to put a question to the experts. And uh, please uh, repeat the last question to uh, the uh, expert. And uh, the chamber would like to remind you again that when you uh, read a, a quote or an extract from a document, please uh, try to do it as slow as uh, possible. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. <coughs> Ms. Becker, um, did you Madame speak Becker, to CHAMS uh, before 1979 and since 1979? Yes. Where did you interview CHAMS after 1979? Here in Cambodia. There, um, we previously saw in document E31156, which was the report by Ket and Mut about your visit, that you had asked to speak to CHAMS. Were you given the opportunity during your 1979, 1978 trip to speak to CHAMS? No. Did you see any mosque during your trip? No. Réponse, no. By the way, during your trip, uh, did you see any voyage, Christian churches? Vu des églises chrétiennes? No, Réponse, in fact, no. the... Um, the Ça one that I knew the best, uh, the French cathedral, um, right at the corner française, near where I used to live at the hotel, that had been completely torn down. Just so the record is clear, that's in Phnom Penh, and can you describe the location a bit more? It was catty corner to the hotel which is now called the Raffles, du, de qui and it faced, Raffles. It, was a, it was a large cathedral, cathedral and it faced um, Le Penom. So it was looking, looking towards the river Donc, on Monivang. Monivang et, uh, sur Thank you. La rivière. On page 226 page of your book, de votre livre, in English, En anglais, ERN is 00 23 37931. In French, so en page 208, 00 63 And in Khmer, en Khmer 00 23 01. You said another basic step was the elimination of the family as any meaningful unit of the society. Besides devising the three constitutional categories of citizens, worker, peasant, and soldier, the Khmer Rouge created other artificial categories that amounted to an unorthodox new class system that subordinated the family by ignoring it. These categories redefined identities and attitudes, shifting from family to revolutionary loyalties, or so the Khmer Rouge hoped. Ou du moins les Khmer Rouge Can you explain what you mean 
when you talk Pour about the Khmer Rouge, vous par là, vous um, dites que eliminating the family as a meaningful unit of society. En tant unité de la Réponse. That families no longer automatically live together, children were divided from their parents, at, often at very young ages, ensemble, that, jeunes, um, les des parents. that children Cela were um, discouraged from seeing their parents as their authority figures, that it would be the Khmer Rouge, the cadre who would be the authority figure, Rouge, that, um, that a married couple would not necessarily at all live together, that they could be divided, um, that, um, that the loyal, and all those things that makes a family stay together, the parents, the children, educating, all those responsibilities that used to be parental became the state, education, feeding, clothing, all those sorts of things, so that it, it, you, you ended up with situations where um, children would go against their parents because that would be required of them under the rules. En application des règles. How did that differ Question. from the situation in the that you observed in 1972 to 74 in Cambodia? Oh, it, uh, it was night and day. It was um, la jour et la nuit. very strong families. Pour les um, la famille est très important. Remarkably, um, you would see fathers very involved with their children in, in ways that you don't often see in all societies. Um, you had distant brother cousins, huge, a huge net for families where different familial responsibilities and the, the family was the basic, the center. And um, it was interesting, as I note with um, Madame Yang Turit, as soon as it was possible, she regrouped her family together. It was very famille. deep, very deep. C'est donc quelque chose de très profond. I want to go back question. a moment um, because I forgot a question to ask Je you something about the Cham. Sur les Cham. You went in your visit in 1978 to Kampong Cham. Is that correct? Cham. Yes. Réponse, oui. And you traveled by river. Is Vous that correct? La I believe so. Yes. Réponse. Je pense que oui. On that trip, or in any other parts of uh, ce voyage, well, let me go back a second. You, I think, said at one point, or can you tell us approximately how many miles or kilometers did you travel in that trip? Avez-vous parcouru au cours de ce voyage? I believe I wrote uh, 2,000. It, we, avoir we, as I said, we spent an inordinate amount of time dit, um, in cars or boats. Dans des voitures ou à bord de in all of that travel, do you recall Question, how many persons you saw in recognizable cham dress, wearing headscarves or the other distinctive clothing, headdresses of cham men? Leur couvre-chef ou autres vêtements. Vous en souvenez-vous? None. Réponse. Aucune personne. I want to ask you about a passage at page 281 of your book. In English, the ERN is 00 7986 in French 00 63 and in Khmer 00 00 23 23 70 you wrote before excuse me you wrote July 1977, there was the first real massacre il y a eu le premier vrai in Compot's cooperative. Quote, before they only took 
the one person they suspected of something, not the family. This massacre of new people and old people, they took the whole, whole family, all of the children, even the babies. There were seven or eight families taken away at once. We did not know why. First of all, who was Compote? Premièrement, qui était Compote? Uh, May Compote uh, was a banker who I knew very well during um, the Khmer Republic period. Um, and he's I tell his story throughout the book. I begin with him. His, his quote is the first one in the book from a Cambodian. Um, his banker, very well educated, Canadian, French um, education, and he stayed on. He um, was one of the people who believed the Khmer Rouge would bring a great revolution, uh, a good, good new um, government. Um, and um, I interviewed him at length when he, um, after 1979. He discusses um, that children, even babies, were killed. And I just want to read to you a bit from a document, E2133, ERN, his document. 0024-2285, the Khmer original 00 It's a list of 18 names. C'est une liste de 18 noms. The last two have the parentheses in parentheses female. Sont en, sont indiquées and then it indiquées states total prisoners, Nombre total de prisoners including 160 children enfants, smashed by Brother Srey are 178 persons. 178 persons total. So we had six, the 18 names Donc, listed. 18 noms, 160 children for a total of 178. As a person who's researched the Khmer Rouge period, do you have an explanation of why they killed children? I can repeat the rationalization. Je peux répéter um, la rationalisation qui était faite. The network system that they, everyone was accused through a network. Tout le monde était accusé and de faire as, partie the, réseau. as the killing snowballed, à mesure que the networks les se sont exploded from Il y a une explosion du nombre de adults réseaux. having relationship with other adults to um, a network including the entire family. That was the, rational, the rationalization. Um, la famille. Voilà but um, if nothing else, this is very irrational. Et cela dit, c'est tout à fait irrationnel. You mentioned at the beginning of your testimony Question. that in addition to the book When the War Was Over, you wrote livre, a small book over, um, can you, about Bopana. Can you tell us about that book? Bopana. Pourriez-vous nous en parler? Um, Réponse. Her story is in When the War Was Over. And uh, when I, um, when I was when I over. first went to the Tool Slang archives, I purposely looked for a woman victim who would have been someone I could have known when I lived there. And, um, and women are often left out of histories. So I, I talked to the wonderful archivists there, and um, I asked for Bopana's um, file, and they were thrilled because it was their favorite file. It's the story of a wonderful young woman who was very courageous, and um, the file contains her love letters to her husband, who was a cadre. Anyway, the story is told right in the middle of this book. 
it um, attracted the attention of a then young filmmaker named Riti Pan, who um, called me up from Paris and asked if he could do a documentary based on this story. And I said, sure, gave it to him for free. And he did his documentary, um, The Tragedy, a Cambodian Tragedy. He did it French, Khmer. And, um, and uh, he fell in love with her too. And um, he named that, that film you can see every day now, twice a day at Tool Slang. And um, he named the uh, Bopana archives that he helped co found to reconstruct the audiovisual memory of this country, to gather all the films and photographs, and Cambodian government, the French government, everybody was helpful. And then so um, she became this big figure, and people wanted to, just a separate little book about her. So I just wrote the book um, for Cambodian audience only in English, French, and Khmer, and it's published by Cambodia Daily. You mentioned that you reviewed her file at Tulslang. What was in the file? How big was this file, and what did it consist of? Um, it's the largest file in the, in the um, archives. Uh, she was kept longer than most, and from the records, she was tortured some very severe. She was a very uh, attractive young woman, and it was clear that she was you know, sexually abused. Um, she was made to write many, many confessions. Um, her husband uh, was also brought in and um, hurt. It's all the usual, the biography, rewritten confessions, um, forced to make up these networks that then would lead to other people being killed. But uh, the, 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 the cache of letters is what brought her story to life. And um, it's one of the few uh, contemporary sort of like diaries of the, the, the emotional life of someone going through this. And um, what just strikes you is you know, the, the, the depth of her feelings and her ability to describe it both as a contemporary Cambodian woman with allusions to French romantic tales and of course, the allusions to Ramayana. And at the end, um, she called herself uh, Sita, in Khmer it's Seda, as the, the Sita to her husband. So it's, um, it's, it's an extraordinary story. And um, this big, and um, as I said, the archives, ar the two women archivists were absolutely thrilled that someone finally asked for her file. And did you determine why she was brought to Tul Slang and tell us her ultimate fate? Um, she and her husband, um, Dad, were um, trying to figure out if they could live together and secretly passing letters to each other. They, um, he was trying to secure permission to, for movement, and um, there was jealousy within her village and um, suspicions so that they were caught and for essentially um, for wanting to live together and trying to subvert the rules, they were both brought in and they were, um, they were both killed in Tulslang. Thank you. I just want to Question. conclude with a couple of questions back where I began when we talked about the Khmer Rouge, particularly Yang Tari, talking about Rouge, the Yang Tarit, Vietnamese being behind the United States, cooperation between la Vietnam and the CIA. American. On page 435 of your book, livre, it's at ERN 00238148. Um, the French ERN is 00238148. 80 and 
and I'm missing at the moment. I, I don't have at the moment the uh, to my ERN. Je n'ai pas le RN Khmer. You wrote Brzezinski said Vous écrivez ceci. Brzezinski I encourage the Chinese to support les Pol Pot. À Pol Pot. I encouraged the Thai les Thaïs to help the DK. Aider le Cambodge démocratique. The question was La question how to help the Cambodian people. Comment aider Pol Pot was an abomination. We could never support him, but China could. La Chine pouvait le faire. And the Brzezinski you refer to there is who? Ms. Becker. De qui s'agit-il? Zbigniew Brzezinski was the national security advisor to President Jimmy Carter. Du président Jimmy Carter pour la sécurité. Did you? Question. Verifies what he's saying correct, that the United States encouraged China after 1979 to support Khmer Rouge forces militarily. Que pouvez-vous en dire? Well, the evidence is yes. They. Um, uh, that's a recorded interview, and um, the United States did play the one of the foundation roles in creating this alliance between uh, the Khmer Rouge, Sihanouk, and um, Son San, the former prime minister, who the three of them had um, their um, supporters and military people along the Thai-Cambodian border, and they, to become a, a military and political entity which then allowed um, Democratic Kampuchea to be in uh, an alliance with Sihanouk as they had, and then Democratic Kampuchea could um, keep its status representing Cambodia at the United Nations, among other things. Given that he refers to Pol Pot as an abomination, why was the United States at that time willing to deal, or at least encourage others to deal and support Pol Pot's forces, uh, even though he was aware of his horrible record? This was the um, last, um, it turned out Cambodia became the last major piece of the um, Cold War to be resolved. The United States sided with China against, which included in this, you know, in, sided with China against the Soviet Union. Um, the Soviet Union supported Vietnam. The United States supported China, which supported Democratic Kampuchea. And then within this, of course, the United States still, as I said, had such rancor against Vietnam, it was not difficult for them to, um, to be against Vietnam. And after the Vietnamese um, invaded and occupied Cambodia, uh, the United States um, was particularly instrumental in convincing Europe to go along with a um, uh, uh, embargo against Cambodia, which um, Many of us wrote against because it was at a time when Cambodia was just recovering from the Khmer Rouge and, that, and for a decade it severely limited the ability of food and humanitarian aid to get into Cambodia. But that it was a, um, at that stage it was the most severe embargo in the, in the world against, in, against Cambodia and it also tightened the embargo against Vietnam. Mr. President, Your Honors, thank you. This concludes my questions. I turn uh, it over to terminé. my civil Je party colleagues. La parole à mes confrères de la partie civile. President, uh, thank you, International Co Prosecutor and the International Lead Co Lawyers for Civil Parties. Uh, do you have the floor? Merci, Monsieur le Président. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Bonjour, Madame Becker. Je m'appelle Marie Guiraud. Je suis avocate du collectif des partis civils. Am, uh, et nous uh, avons dix représentants des partis civils dans la salle aujourd'hui. Ils viennent des provinces de Takeo et de Zweiring. Uh, 
Je voulais commencer mes I questions, to start Madame l'expert, en revenant sur un document qui a été évoqué ce matin par mon confrère du, morning, du bureau du procureur uh, et qui fait état des différentes demandes qui ont été les vôtres quand vous êtes arrivé en décembre 1978 au Cambodia démocratique. Ce document, c'est le document, document E3-1156. Document IRN en Khmer 0032944. IRN en français 0080714143. IRN en anglais 0052450. 4-5-0-8. Dans les neuf demandes que vous formulez au début de votre séjour au démocratique, il est indiqué en numéro 7 at point, at quite, at se renseigner seven, sur le recrutement de l'armée. Est-ce que vous vous souvenez avoir fait cette demande particulière de vous renseigner sur le recrutement de l'armée Yes. Oui. Pouvez-vous dès lors nous expliquer pourquoi vous avez fait cette requête, request, quelles étaient les informations dont vous disposiez à l'époque sur le recrutement de l'armée et quelles sont les informations que vous avez réunies lors de votre voyage et lors des différentes interviews que vous avez menées The, the point was, uh, I, we, we vague, I vaguely knew that there was a problem with, with the Army because of the purges in the various zones. And by the time we arrived in Cambodia, um, Hang Sim Rin, Hun Sen had already joined from the Eastern Zone with the Vietnamese uh, to prepare for what became the front that came with the Vietnamese to invade. So um, my question was, you know, They're, they were facing a war, and they already had some um, significant um, uh, uh, significant loss of the soldiers who were fleeing the purge in the eastern zone and went to Vietnam, plus the presumption being that um, some of the military had already been lost in the purges. So what? You know, what, who are they recruiting? How are they going to face what was going to be a very difficult um, battle with Vietnam? Je vous remercie, Madame l'expert, pour vous faire euh, rebondir sur euh, vos précédentes déclarations. Euh, Avez-vous eu des informations lors de votre voyage, lors des entretiens que vous avez menés sur la façon dont euh, il a été remédié aux pertes et qui était recruté dans l'armée Um, the information was more indirect than direct, but when I was on the, um, the Eastern Front with Commander Pin, um, it was quite clear that there were um, very young soldiers. And um, I took quite a few photographs just of the soldiers because the age was so markedly young. tell us quand vous indiquez qu'il s'agissait de soldats particulièrement jeunes que vous avez vu que vous avez photographiés, est-ce que vous pouvez you donner une indication à la Cour sur l'âge, selon vous, et selon vos propres observations, des, des soldats, si vous le pouvez if possible. This is guessing, but um, many didn't look like teenagers, and... Um, Uh, the, when, I, when I mentioned it, um, it was very hard to get ages. So they, um, they resisted it, and um, it, it, was easy, it, it, was, it was interesting because it was easier to get ages of the, the, the young workers at the institute than it was of the soldiers. So... Pour clore ce sujet, vous avez demandé à vos interlocuteurs l'âge des soldats et ces derniers 
Et les gens ont refusé de vous répondre ou ont été évasifs dans leurs réponses, ou ils étaient bien compris. Est-ce que c'est ça Oui. Je vous remercie. Merci. Pour continuer sur ce document, document euh, je voulais revenir sur un point qui a été évoqué par le procureur international ce matin, le point morning. numéro 9 de votre visite, of your visit, par lequel vous souhaitez in, rencontrer in ou vous renseigner sur la population Cham. Cham je voulais savoir pourquoi vous étiez particulièrement intéressé à l'époque en amont de votre visite euh, sur la population Cham et quelles sont les informations dont vous disposiez à l'époque avant votre voyage sur le traitement réservé à la population Cham sous le Kampuchea démocratique Already from the refugee reports on the border, um, the Choms were already pinpointed by the refugees as targets. Um, I think, uh, I can't remember that any other minority group had already been identified by the refugees. It was the Choms. Donc, si je comprends so if bien, I understood well, Madame l'expert, c'est donc sur la base des informations que vous avez reçues de réfugiés que vous avez considéré que la question de la minorité Cham nécessitait euh, des enquêtes ou une investigation particulière. Oui, mais je n'ai pas interviewé ces réfugiés en Thaïlande. D'autres personnes ont interviewé ces Je vous remercie. Merci. Je voulais maintenant vous faire réagir à des questions et des réponses que vous avez apportées euh, hier sur la question du bouddhisme. Et je voulais utiliser les informations que vous avez données hier à la lumière des deux ans que vous avez passés au Cambodge avant le Cambodge démocratique. Lorsque vous avez été interrogé par le juge Lavergne, vous avez indiqué que lors de votre séjour, vous aviez constaté que les pagodes étaient vides et vous aviez indiqué ceci hier à 13h33. Les pagodes in the afternoon, étaient vides, j'en ai vu plus d'une qui était empty, utilisée comme grenier. Lorsque j'ai posé des questions à leur sujet, on m'a répondu que c'était tout pagodas, simplement une réaction, que les personnes avaient perdu la foi. Je voulais vous so faire réagir, Madame l'expert, par rapport à cette question-là de la religion bouddhiste. Je voulais savoir si vous pouviez nous expliquer ce qu'elle représentait avant, dans la société d'avant 1975, notamment à la lumière des deux années que vous avez passées ici, ce que, selon vous, What, euh, le to régime you, du Kampuchea démocratique a fait sur la religion euh, bouddhiste euh, à l'aune notamment de ce que in vous avez pu constater lors de votre of what séjour you en 1978. Uh, first, um, what I said that the Khmer Rouge called it a reactionary faith. And the translator said react or something. So um, it's a, and this was said repeatedly. This, if, this, the Buddhism was, Buddhism was a reactionary faith and people no longer were attracted to it. And um, this was uh, astonishing because the, the official, you know, Buddhism was part of what Cambodia was officially, and um, the, the song of the, the, the Buddhist prelates were part of the functioning of the society. Uh, there were religious minorities, but it was a proudly very Buddhist country. Um, there was, um, I, it was so much in part of the, the fabric of life from the morning when the monks would come around begging for food to the Buddhist holidays, uh, celebrations of weddings, the, the calendar, the official calendar included the Buddhist um, holidays, um, the funerals, uh, the pagodas, the, the language included Buddha. It was, it's, it's hard to, to, to divide it. Um, uh, the Buddhist Institute was one of the, um, the, the um, institutes that helped foment independence here in Cambodia. It's, 
the, all these symbols you see. This, you look at the courtroom. I mean, this, it's Buddhist. Um, so the idea that in you know one year, being it's reactionary, um, it's impossible. That they defrock the monks, um, forbid the faith, and um, just took it out. There's no more Buddhism. Thank you. Dans un article que vous in avez écrit suite à votre visite le 29 visit décembre 68, 78, pardon, un article écrit pour le Washington Post qui s'appelle en français « Le Cambodge aspire à l'autosuffisance et à l'indépendance, quel qu'en soit le coût humain ». Et c'est un document qui est enregistré sous le numéro E3-3391, IRN en anglais 0044-52-57, IRN en clair 00-70-35-43, IRN en français, 00-72-91-19, vous écrivez à ce propos, et je vous cite, « J'ai également noté l'effacement complet de la culture bouddhiste, fondement de la nation cambodgienne pendant des siècles, ce qui m'a laissé le sentiment d'être un pays ayant perdu ce que je considérais auparavant comme son âme. » Est-ce que vous confirmez aujourd'hui que c'est le sentiment qui vous a animé à l'issue de votre voyage en décembre 1978 Oui. Merci, Madame Becker. Je, je voulais maintenant vous faire réagir à des propos que vous avez tenus hier en réponse à certaines questions de Monsieur le juge Lavergne. Et notamment lorsqu'il a évoqué avec vous, à 13h35, 33 secondes pour être précise hier, la question des relations familiales et du mariage. Vous avez évoqué en, en réponse à sa question, euh, en, en alinéa 23, pour que les parties puissent éventuellement suivre le transcript avec moi, vous indiquez qu'il fallait obtenir la permission pour être marié. A permission to je voulais savoir marry. si vous pouviez nous expliquer un petit peu plus en détail, en détail qui who vous a donné cette information, gave you this information à quelle occasion est-ce qu'il s'agissait de personnes que vous avez interviewées, de hauts dirigeants Est-ce que vous pouvez nous en dire un petit peu plus sur cette information que vous avez donnée hier Il fallait une permission pour être marié. Permission de qui Qui a donné cette permission The permission came, um, I was told it was through the cooperative leaders, and um, this was a subject uh, brought up several times, and, um, it, and I'm sure that um, Prasit was um, involved in this, so it would be up there, and um, co-op leaders. I can't tell you exactly which province I was in, but definitely. Dans quelle province j'en ai entendu parler, mais en tout cas j'en ai entendu parler souvent. Est-ce que de manière plus générale, la question speaking, du mariage a été évoquée uh, lors de vos différents entretiens during your avec les various, dirigeants uh, with, uh, senior leaders when you travel to Democratic Cambodia? Um, yes, it came up regarding um, when to marry. Oui, on a parlé de in order to ensure population growth and um, who should marry and, um, and how married people lived or did not live together. Je vous remercie, Madame l'expert. Je voudrais vous faire réagir Now, sur les trois like points que vous venez de mentionner. To, to three points vous semblez faire un, un parallèle ou en tout cas une connexion entre case, le moment du mariage et la question de l'augmentation de la population. Est-ce que j'ai bien compris ce que vous nous avez dit so, Et est-ce que well? c'est une connexion que vous avez faite vous-même Le mariage et l'augmentation de la population. 
N no, I did not make that link myself. This, no, when you okay, said in our conversations, women. when did marriage came up? And marriage Mais did come up in terms of a population increase. And, um, and when, when, when would be uh, the ideal for people to marry and the, the importance to democratic compatriot to, to increase the, the population? Merci. Thank Je reviendrai you. sur cette question un, un petit peu plus tard. Je voulais simplement vous faire réagir sur les, les deux autres points que vous avez mentionnés, notamment qui devait se marier entre eux, j'imagine, et je voulais vous faire réagir sur ce point, si vous le savez, et comment les couples mariés devaient ensuite vivre leur vie conjugale. Est-ce que vous avez eu des informations sur ces deux derniers points Qui se mariait ensemble et comment les couples mariés vivaient-ils During the trip in December 1978, uh, I, I didn't get all the detail I would later learn. So, and in 1978, it was simply um, the co-op um, approving of marriage. They did not talk about who decided who would marry. How to live together, um, I raised because I saw um, particularly when I was out on my own, groups of men and dormitories that were clearly single sex. So um, having heard them talk about the desire to increase the population, it seemed contradictory that um, I would see the single sex, particularly male dormitories. And that's when they talked about visitations, but again, not in great detail. Justement, c'était ma prochaine question. Je voulais vous faire réagir sur une indication que vous avez donnée hier à la Chambre sur ces visites conjugales. Qui vous en a parlé et qu'en avez-vous su à l'époque Uh, uh, I can't tell you exactly um, who Je talked to me, but um, sure, it was Prasid again. Um, it was simply, if I'm not mistaken, uh, I was given, you know, that they visited X number of times a week or X number of times a month. Um, generally, when I ask a question, they had numbers. They were rather, um, they had rules and regulations, and I remember, I think, in some one of those notes, um, there were, you know, there were rules and regulations that X number of visits per month or week. Je vous remercie, Madame l'expert. Quand vous parlez, et je vous cite en, en anglais parce que je vous écoute en anglais, rules and regulations, qu'entendez-vous par ce terme Est-ce qu'il s'agit d'un document écrit Est-ce que c'est un document que vous avez vu, qu'on vous a montré Que pouvez-vous nous en dire No document. Um, rules and regulations means that when I, non, you would say how many times do they, you know, how much rice do they eat, then you'd always say they eat X number of kilos a month or, or one kilo, whatever. How many times do they visit, then the answer would be X number of rules. So I'm not talking about a document or a law that I saw. I'm talking about the answers I received. Pour vous faire réagir sur ce dernier point de ces rules and regulations qui n'étaient pas des documents écrits, mais qui étaient des réponses qui vous étaient apportées, est-ce que ces réponses vous étaient apportées de manière aussi précise sur d'autres Le Président, 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 le Président
Uh, please leave a sufficient pause before you start putting questions, because uh, otherwise uh, it will be overlapped and it will be not a proper uh, record on a transcript. And uh, please uh, repeat your last question. Thank you. And also, when you uh, refer to an extract from a document, please uh, read it slowly. And if possible, repeat the reference uh, number uh, twice, and if it comes to your name, maybe your national counterpart can assist with the pronunciation. Thank you. Je vous remercie, Monsieur le Président. Thank you, Mr. President. Ma dernière question, uh, Madame l'expert, concernait ces rules and regulations dont vous nous parlez. Uh, vous nous expliquez uh, que, à vos différentes uh, questions, vos interlocuteurs you, venaient avec des réponses qui semblaient précises et déjà connues. Uh, et je voulais savoir known. si ces réponses vous ont été données juste sur la question du mariage ou sur d'autres sujets qui ont été abordés lors de votre séjour, par exemple, les conditions de travail, exemple, euh, le niveau de production de riz, etc. The, uh, etc. Um, yes, and I have them in that chapter in my book. Oui, and um, at one stage, un uh, we just got tired of writing the same nous X number of desserts, X number of rice, and so on and so forth. But this is all, you know, detailed de riz, about what is considered required. Je vous remercie. J'ai juste une dernière série de questions, donc je vais peut-être arriver à finir avant la, la pause so déjeuner. Je voulais vous faire réagir sur un concept que vous avez concept, uh, évoqué dans votre ouvrage, book, qui est un concept que je vais dire en anglais parce que la traduction française qui nous a été donnée est insuffisante. C'est le concept de Cambodian worker peasant. Est-ce que vous avez déjà entendu ce terme, Cambodian worker peasant Um, had I heard it before I went there? Um, yes. Pour vous inviter à, à prolonger and, votre and réponse, est-ce que lorsque vous étiez sur place, vous avez à nouveau entendu ce concept? Et si oui, again? de la bouche de qui? And if so, who mentioned it? Um, Yes, and um, oui. I heard it often enough that um, I didn't notice. Entendu suffisamment souvent pour ne même plus faire attention. Pouvez-vous nous expliquer Can la signification de ce concept? concept? Well, um, as I took it. Que ai conclu. And this is from reading um, official Democratic Kampuchea um, throughout those years as they broadcast on, and I read on um, foreign broadcast information, FIBIS. You see worker peasant throughout. I mean, it's a very common, common, common thing. And um, that would be that in, um, in the new class society, peasants take the role of what would have been the, the proletariat, the working class in a more um, uh, uh, urbanized setting. So that in worker peasant, you have the most common um, basic class. That's how I understood it in context. Est-ce que pour vous, And ce concept you, impliquait ou this, induisait un euh, uh, gommage des identités individuelles ou des identités communautaires of, uh, This concept alone, I wouldn't say it erased individual. Um, 
it's putting a lot on one concept. I mean, uh, it's cert the, the whole class system certainly um, vastly diminished individuality and community, redefining it. And this is one of the building blocks. Avez-vous entendu dans le cadre de vos entretiens avec les dirigeants que vous avez menés euh, des explications tournant autour de la notion de pureté ou de pureté ethnique Est-ce que c'est un terme qui est revenu dans les différents entretiens que vous avez menés Et si oui, pouvez-vous nous en dire un peu plus What I heard was um, you, the, the, the one Cambodian nation, one Cambodian people, entendu, um, and uh, when um, I read more about lorsque the sense of the purity than I heard, um, the, uh, when I would ask purité, about minorities, um, I was told this is one Cambodian nation, one Cambodian people. Vous indiquez dans votre ouvrage, pour clore ce sujet, vous indiquez dans votre ouvrage euh, en IRN. En anglais, 00-23-79-51. En français, 0-06-38-506. En Khmer, 00-23-23-25. Et je vous cite l'obsession de la pureté raciale sous le régime Khmer Rouge. Est-ce que vous pouvez nous en dire un peu plus Yes, um, you know, that's after all the research, after the, particularly after the Democratic Compagnie was overthrown, and um, all the research um, that I did and others did on um, the, um, the, the purging, the killing of, of minorities, and um, I include interviews and reference to other research, but it was, it was very much um, the, um, the, the, the pure Khmer, Khmer race. And um, as, um, as, I, as was quoted in the CHOM chapter, women look alike, men look alike, you, you are just one Cambodian nation. Je vous remercie, Madame l'expert. Monsieur le Président, j'ai terminé mes questions. Je vous remercie. Thank you. And the international co prosecutor, you have the floor. Thank you, Your Honors. I just wanted to bring to the parties and Your Honors' attention one document. Uh, yesterday, I read the names of four individuals that Ben Kiernan asked Malcolm Caldwell to inquire about before his trip. Ben to Cambodia in 1979. À, uh, There's a document on the case file, E3129, in which those four names appear e as numbers 2, 5, 6, 8. Uh, it's called Names of Prisoners de de Coming from France Not, not Yet Interrogated. It's an S21 document. So, and it indicates that each of these four individuals entered S21 on the 23rd of October, 1976. I just ask Mr. Seng Liang to read the names, please. Mr. President. On the list, le président, the names appear at the number three, which is Ki Gum three, Ki Gum and at number five, Ensuite, number cinq, Lai Rose, Lai Rose, and number six, six 
U lam. U lam. And lastly, that Lanfant. is number eight. Numéro huit. Chu wood. Chu. Thank you. Wood. Bah. President, thank you. And Judge Lavange, you can proceed. Oui, avant de, de conclure cette session, peut-être une clarification pour que ceci puisse être noté aux transcriptions de cette audience. Ce matin, Mme Baker, à la question du procureur, vous avez parlé d'un livre écrit par un Cambodgien qui avait vécu dans le maquis avec les Khmer Rouges. Et vous avez donné le nom de ce livre en anglais et je ne suis pas sûr qu'il ait été traduit en français. C'est pour ça que je le mentionne. Sauf erreur de ma part, ce matin, vous avez parlé du livre qui s'appelait « Regrets of the Khmer Soul ». Et ce livre, me semble-t-il, avait été écrit par un Cambodgien qui s'appelait Sarin. Et vous en avez fait état dans votre livre. Donc c'est la référence E3-20 à l'ERN en anglais 00237845 et en français 00634411. Je n'ai pas le RN en Khmer. Mais est-ce que vous pouvez bien nous préciser si c'était bien ce livre dont il était fait état ce matin Whether it is indeed the book you referred to this morning. Yes. Oui. President, thank you. It is now time for our lunch break. We will take a break now and resume at 1.30 this afternoon. Court officer, please assist the expert during the break time and have her returns to the courtroom at 1.30 this afternoon. And security guards, you instructed to take uh, Mr. Kirsten Pohn to the uh, waiting room downstairs and have him return to this uh, courtroom be before 1.30 this afternoon. The court is now in recess.